evening, everyone. Welcome to Rotor Talk Live, Season 6, Episode 36, DJI Mini 4 Pro Leaks. Hope everyone is doing well this evening. Before I greet everybody, I just want to take us back a week. We went through a hurricane a week ago today, okay? Well, you know, on the outskirts, but we had to prepare for one and act like we were going to get hit. And very fortunate, and, and I want to report to all of you, you probably saw the updates and everything, but I want to report to everybody that we really didn't get a whole lot of wind and rain. In fact, of the four, possibly maybe five hurricanes that I've been through since I've moved here, this was by far the most minimal impact. We had very minimal wind, very minimal rain. Um, very fortunate. Those up in Cedar Key did get hit, and they did get hit pretty hard up there. But fortunately, where it hit in the bend, is, it's called the bend up there, where you know Florida takes a turn up there by the peninsula. Um, it's not as populated as like we are down here in Tampa, Bradenton, Sarasota, Fort Myers, and so forth. So, um, so we're very fortunate. And to those who got hit by it in, in Georgia and maybe South Carolina, you know, our thoughts and prayers are with them because, you know, it did leave an impact. So just want to kind of start off with that. Let's see who all is in that house tonight. I know we got a house full and we got a lot to talk about tonight here. Uh, Jody Drone Shots, Quinn Dynasty Drones, uh, USA Drone Flyer Captain Joe America is here. John Olson is here. Let's see who else is here. Uh, Art is here. Akarasho, John, Flying Flynn Media. Uh, let's see who else. Uh, Richard is here. Sergeant Rock is here. Uh, who else? Well, Lauren is here. Welcome, Lauren. Uh, all right, here. Drone Views Media. Fly Guy Merrill, all right. Uh, let's see who else we got. Uh, Leonard Oglesby, welcome, Leonard. Casey Crime Fighter, welcome, my friend. Good to see you. Um, and, okay, all right. Like I said, we got a full, I mean, we're talking full. <laughs> you know, last week we ended a little bit early because I, you know, there really wasn't a whole lot to, to discuss. Well, tonight we're, we're, we're wall to wall. We're pretty full. Um, Marcus and Ron will join us here in a little bit and boy, do we have a lot to talk about it? It, 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 re it really is a lot. So, but again, you know, a week ago today, we were going through the hurricane and today, you know, it's very thankful, very thankful for minimal impact and hoping that that, <laughs> hoping that that's our one and done for the year. Okay. That would be really nice. I'm not, I'm not going to complain. Trust me. One a year is, is almost too much in my book. So, all right. We're going to go ahead and get started here. And the first thing is, um, there was an article on Drone DJ today, the Hotel Drones Approved Remote, remote ID. I wanted to go over that here. Um, let's go ahead and share the screen here. All right. Which Hotel Robotics Drones are approved for FA Remote ID? Um, FA remote ID rules apply to all drones operated in the United States with following exceptions. You fly a drone that weighs less than 250 grams, such as the Autel Evo Nano, and you fly it only for recreation purposes. You fly a drone in an FAA recognized identification area. Uh, the FRAs will be your traditional model airplane fields where hobbyists have gathered and flown safely for decades. Okay. Um, you know, let's get to the meat, meat of the article. Autel Evo Nano, weighing less than 250 grams. And Nano is a compact drone. Um, the Autel the drone models that have been approved by the FAA for adequate compliance with its remote ID rule are the Autel Evo Nano, the Autel Evo Lite, the Autel Evo Lite Plus, the Autel Evo 2 V3, the Autel Evo Max, the Autel Dragonfish Standard, okay, and that's the that's that big uh, commercial drone that they have. The Autel Dragonfish Pro, okay. So um, you know this is the list from Autel, and it looks like it's pretty much all the drones that they that they currently have right now, which is a good thing. You know that these are approved for remote ID, so that's good. Obviously, older drones, older Autel drones, you would probably have to look at some type of aftermarket uh remote id solution for that uh if you want to stay compliant uh th that would be where you would go but i think it's a good article and again just to repeat for those of you who aren't familiar 
all these articles. And I actually, this week I took the time. It's a little bit harder to post things now out to, to the Facebook pages because their Facebook is, anyway, it makes it more difficult to post out to pages into groups. These are all in the groups, but I took the effort today to go ahead out there and post these to the Facebook page as well. So all these articles, everything that we're going over tonight is in Build a Drone Reviewer Facebook group and Facebook page. So feel free to look these articles up and read them at your leisure. Um, you know, I want to call that out to make sure that you, if you want to, it's easier for me to do that than to drop the links in the description. That way you guys can find them. They're there. They're readily, they're, they're easily accessible. So, so we have that. All right. That's a good, that's a good thing here. So um, we're going to move on here now. The Mavic 3 had a huge firmware update, and we're going to go over that here in just a little bit. But uh, I want to talk about the Air 3 had a firmware update. Now, I put out a YouTube Shorts regarding this, and we're going to go ahead, and I'm going to go ahead and share the article on this here. Hang on a second. Let's see here. Yes, DJI Air 3 firmware update arrives with bug fixes. Okay. All right, aircraft firmware version of V0100.0400 uh, is now available to download to the Air 3. Uh, the JetFly app has not been updated, but you'd want to check the camera settings in the app after updating the firmware since they'd likely reset to the default. Uh, official release notes supplied by DJI do not mention specifically which issues are being resolved by the new firmware, but some users have reported better camera performance after the update, it's worth mentioning the Air 3 features dual cameras, both equipped with one over one third inch sensors to capture 48 megapixel photos and 4K 60 frames per second HDR videos. In terms of imaging, the ISP performance and algorithms of the drone have been improved by DJI, resulting in enhanced overall image quality. Moreover, the dual camera image consistency is high, providing ample post-processing space with low difficulty. Uh, besides compared to the Air 2 West, the latest model, the Air Series, it's undergone comprehensive upgrades in terms of battery life, image transmission, and obstacle avoidance, all aiming to deliver a more enjoyable flying experience to users. Okay. Um, you know, it, basically, I did the firmware update, and then I went out for my flight this weekend, and I have a video coming out this week. I have actually have two videos coming out on the, on the Air 3 this week. Um the one uh, I did right after the, both of them were, were after the firmware update. Um, and I can tell you this, the camera look, things looked a little, th things look sharper. I will, I will tell you that. Um, and I did something I haven't done with a, with a feature that's been on, on drones for, for quite some time. So um, we'll feel free to take a look at that. Welcome, sir. How are you? Pretty darn good. How's William? I'm telling you, you know, it, it's like, if there's an, we may have, we may have to be on here like two or three hours tonight. Okay. <laughs> with everything we got to cover. Yeah. I've just been out trying out that new update with this. Ah, thing. well, I was going to say something. I saw, I went out to drone XL and I saw Russ from 51 drones had a video out there. So I assume he was probably part of the beta testers. Um, Looks like they all were except for you and me, Bill. Yeah, everybody everybody knew about this ahead of time. And, of course, our friend Igor had posted uh, all, all the goodies on that out there as well, too. Which... Yeah, Jovo did one. Aldrin did one that I know mm -hmm. of. And like you, uh, I initially saw Russ's uh, video, and his video was very comprehensive. He uh, he went through pretty much everything. Yeah, and, and you know, and, and that kind of tells me here, that, that kind of tells me, and we're going to we're going to go over this here. And here's Ron. Hey, Ron. Hello, gentlemen. How are we doing tonight? Well, you're absolutely fantastic. We may, I was telling Marcus, we may be on two or three hours tonight with all the, all the, everything we got to talk about. Oh, uh, this will be, this will be a barn burner. Did you, did you get yours flying? Well, I, 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 had, I did test flying. So yeah. we get to that part. I can tell you my findings. Yeah, it's cool. Well, well we're going to go over this here. And I want to bring bring it up a panel by panel. Igor did a great job breaking it down. So I want to go over that because I think this is important enough to go over it. And I was just remarking to, to Marcus, Ron, you know, obviously, you know, the three of us weren't weren't privy to getting the firmware update to beta test. 
like our good friend Dobo and Russ from 51 Drones and, and, and Aldrin and everybody, they had this ahead of time because it was a big enough of an update. I mean, this, this is, this is, and, and I want to say this before we start going over this, and, and I want to get your thoughts before, before we dive into this. Does this make the Mavic 3 the best consumer drone that DJI has right now? Well, I think Marcus was saying earlier today, it puts the Pro back in the in the Mavic 3 line of drones. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I I, I agree. I mean... And, and it, Bill, before you get started on these features, I do have to caution you that the just the standard Mavic 3 gets kind of a stripped-down version of these uh, features. We, you don't get everything on the Mavic 3. Right. Right. Well, everything... Thing, but the three X Tele, Ron. What? What? Well, we... well, well, we'll we'll go over that okay. when he gets to it. But I'll explain. Uh, something we talked about today did not come to fruition on the Mavic Three. Oh, I'll be darned. Yeah. Okay. DJI leakers detail trove improvements in Mavic Three drone series upgrade. Okay. Um. So we're gonna go out to. Let's see here. Uh, we're gonna go out to Igor, and what I want to do is okay. Igor was a, Igor was a busy man this weekend, Bill. Oh my gosh, he sure was. He put he, out. He didn't. He didn't get the Labor Day holiday off like the rest of us, Bill. No, he did not. He was he was burning the midnight oil, Ron. That's <laughs> for sure. Just about every which way, shape, and form. Okay. So you guys um, always throw me because I've always heard it pronounced Igor. Probably <laughs> it could be, it could be. Um, okay, here at Mavic Three Series update. Mavic 3, Mavic 3 Cine, Mavic 3 Classic, Mavic 3 Pro, Mavic 3 Pro Cine. Feature description, flight assistance imaging. Utilizing the fisheye lens on the fuselage, it provides black and white visual images in four directions, front, back, left, and right, assisting in observing obstacles in the blind spot of flight and enhancing the safety of aerial photography. So what do you guys think about this one? Works awesome. I had fun with it. You tried? You tried? Okay. Okay. Oh, now, yeah. how did you how did you activate it? I never saw an option to to use yeah, it's vision. Down, down, there, it's down there on the map, Ron. You, you well, you can cycle from the map to the attitude indicator, and then from the attitude indicator to the cameras. If you, yeah, I never you, noticed you go any. In the bottom right hand corner of the map, you touch it. It takes you to the attitude indicator. You touch it again. It takes you to the cameras. Oh, okay, so you have to okay. know what you're doing. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. very good. Good, good. Okay, so then that's that's the first part. Here's here's the second part here. Uh, application scenarios, uh, fly around, telephoto, and night flights. When conducting a circling shot, observe obstacles on both sides through lateral auxiliary imaging. Telephoto, the long focus camera is a narrowed field of view, making it difficult to judge the distance of objects. This can be assisted by forward vision auxiliary images to present the environment ahead, allowing for focus, long lens composition. Night flights at night, the lighting conditions do not meet the requirements for obstacle avoidance, but obstacles can be detected by observing bright points in the visual auxiliary images to determine if there are objects in the vicinity. Okay. Can, can I expand on that a little bit, Bill? You sure can, Marcus. Go ahead. So, so messing around with it, when I was messing around with it today, I was thinking about exactly that. I was thinking, okay, when will I ever use this? You know what? For me, honestly, the obstacle avoidance is what I'll use. Now, you know, they're talking about night flights. Yeah, I suppose then you could, if, you know, but like Ron and I have discussed this many times, I very seldom fly at night, very seldom. Uh, so, but I, I suppose, and I guess if I am flying at night, Hopefully I'm not that close to anything. Uh, but then the, the other thing that I can think of, though, is if you are a serious videographer and you are trying to get a shot, you're going to turn obstacle avoidance off because you don't, not only do you not want it to bypass, you don't even want the drone to break. You want it to be in a certain position in space. And this allows you that kind of situational, situational awareness uh, to be able to do that. I'll be honest with you, for the average guys like us, it's just kind of a gimmick. It's fun. Uh, but uh, but but the other feature that uh, with regard to OA, the, the uh, uh, attitude indicator where it shows the hazards around you, that one I can see would be very valuable to us. Yeah, I did not, you know, I test, so I've tested with the beast. So I did not have a lot of stuff to avoid there, but I will take it over to the park tomorrow where there's plenty to avoid and try that out and try your method of using the um, 
all the uh, you know the uh, is that the is that what's called division assist that feature? I, is that, I, you know what? I don't know exactly what yeah, there's, there's so many there's so many yeah. new terminologies, but vision position. And, but anyhow, I'm going to try that tomorrow at the park where there's plenty to avoid. And and that's what I did, Ron. I was out at the park and I had it all between the trees and so forth. And uh, it's it's effective. It works really well. Bill, Bill this uh, nobody talks about this, and this may be something of a previous update that I I'm, I'm I haven't flown the drone for a while, mainly so I may miss this. But uh, Bill, you don't have the little uh, Vada FPV drone, but when you get that drone, it has an H, a home point. Everywhere you go in the Avada, that's on the Mavic 3 now. That little H, as soon as I took up, I said, oh, look, the little H from the Avada's there. So and even when you do the return to home, when it's doing that new thing, that AR home point, it had got the little H right in the middle of where it's coming back to. That little H, that's the best little thing, Mark. Is so, so, Ron, that augmented reality, what I did was I, I, I took it out and I went over one of the ponds out at the park and I got the drone down low so that I knew – it would have to go up and over obstacles to get to the return to home. Oh, that's smart. Yeah. And, and it was so fun watching that AR path. It just did a big arc up and over and back down. It was it was really cool. Yeah, I, I did I wasn't smart to do that. It just kind of came back straight back to me. Yeah. But you know what I did, Bill, to make it interesting? So What's I, that? I, I I flew down from my point in the beach down to above the pier, hit return to home, you know, and it put the little the little pathway up and put the little H up, but then I turned the seven X camera on and 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 turn and even even digital zoom the seven X camera and there I was standing there on top of the uh, top of the dune there waving or whatever as it was, <laughs> that was coming back or whatever you know that's, that's awesome one, one use for the seven X camera but here here's one thing Marcus and I talked about today Bill one of the the things is it, it gave the seven X tele lens uh, I, I guess the three X also you um the D log, the D log M and the HDL, the 10 bit feature. Well, guess what, Marcus? It didn't give it to, it may give it to in the Mavic 3 Pro, but not on the regular Mavic 3. I, I played around with the sayings and I could find no way to turn um, those features on in the 7X camera. And you know, Ron, I'm sorry. I didn't even look at that because it's not a feature I'm terribly worried about. It's it, it probably limited just to the, because there was rumors that the well, 7X camera on the on the pro wasn't the same camera as improved camera so yeah i don't yeah unless i was missing something you don't get that on the plane mavic 3 hey ron uh bill i, I don't we're probably derailing your agenda here no no, but, no go go for it no, uh, no, no. but but uh one of the things that so ron and i when we did our updates today we both purposely did it differently ron did the uh the the uh oa over the app update and then i did it with the uh dji assistant too and and what i wanted to tell ron was ron when i was all done and i got out to the park uh it had to do further updating and, oh no and, well i believe i think there's a good reason for it i i so i updated this on assistant two then i updated this and i think what it had to do is put them both in agreement right they they both had to agree that they had you know certain firmware. It didn't take very long. It, yeah, it didn't. It didn't want inconsistent firmware. Right, right. So so when you did it, you were doing it over the app. So of course it was doing all that in the background. And and the way I did it separately, I think it just had to say, okay, I'm running this, and the other one says, yeah, I'm running this, and you know. Now see, and, and I'm yeah. gonna make. A, I'm gonna make. That's a good point that you brought up, Marcus. Okay, because. For, for years, I have been saying, you know, use, use Assistant 2, use Assistant 2. But that was until we got started getting the smart controllers and the, and the RC and the RC2. And then that ball game changed, okay? Because I'll tell you what, I, I am doing updates like Ron Ron does them. I do that through the controller, and, and I've, you know, not gone out. You know, every time I've gone out to fire it up, it's ready to go, okay? Well, There's Bill, no I have a little tail woe on that, so... Um... You know, again, I use the RC Pro, but I, I, I had my update failed twice in a row where it only got to 1% and failed on the drone. So I turned everything off. And you made sure I, internet, internet was an issue. And then I only turned the controller on, Bill, not the drone. And and up popped the thing that wanted to update the Fly app because yeah, I Fly got updated also. So on the controller, I hit the, you know, I, the, okay. 
and update the fly app or whatever. When I got the fly app all squared away, then I started to drone up again, right? And then on the first try, the update went right through, did the usual, took like, you know, 15 minutes or whatever, but it, it kept choking on it, the update, until I had the fly app updated on the controller. Right, you, you had to update the fly app first before you could update the drone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, we've well, got a remark in the chat from uh, Mark White. He's asking, because we were talking about that augmented reality return to home. And he's talking about the shadow uh, that yeah. it places of the drone when you're looking down. And, Mark, that is really cool. Now, Skydio has had that for years. But, Ron, when I was when I was landing, I it didn't get a precision landing. It was off the pad. So I stopped the landing, and I pointed the camera down, and I used that shadow to get right over the top of the landing pad. And sure enough, plopped it right down in the middle of the H by putting that shadow of the drone right on the mark. It's just it's like we used cool. to do, like you said, with the Scotty O2. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, and and I did I did two return to homes, Bill, and, and the shadow and, and the camera even like even the, the camera pitches itself down, you know, while it's coming down there. Oh yeah. And, oh yeah. And the shadow comes out. Now I, I took off of the street. I didn't have a landing pad down, but but it it more it, it, it you know it pretty much landed in the same spot. It took off both times. I mean I can't say it would have been dead on a pad, but it was, it was almost right in the same spot. But the, but the shadow, yeah, I mean that's another great feature to the AR. You know, return to home. You, you get the shadow. And then when I when I took off the street, Bill, I wasn't, I didn't really care where it landed, because you know, I mean, within a within a, a broad range. But if I was trying to land, sometimes I try to land in a tight spot where the, the landing pads, you know, only so big, and you're on the beach, you don't want it to sand. Sometimes I try to land on tabletops. You know the side of yeah. walls and things like that. Yeah. Right, and that's right, right. real handy on those situations or whatever. Yeah, you're taking off from the, the parking lot or whatever. You could care less or whatever. But yeah. is that right. Marcus? You how, how how many times have you been on a, on a whole big old parking lot and the drone comes down once it wants to hit the one edge of the curb or whatever? It could land any place it yeah. wants, but it picks the edge of the curb. Yeah, and one of one of the issues I have is I don't have very good depth perception. So this is, it's just a handy aid for me. Hey, I wanted to point out, uh, Waypoint New England is pointing out that he failed five times on over the app, and then he used Assistant 2 and uh, and was able to get it done. So I wonder if he had the same problem as I did. He didn't have the app updated on the controller uh, ahead of time. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah. It's very possible. Real quick, and then we're going to move on to the next point here. Uh, in the app, uh, to activate it in the app, go to Settings, Safety, AR Settings, and select to enable. Okay. Uh, it was it was pre-enabled on mine, Bill. Mine, mine, mine as well. Yeah. 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 Okay. But, but that's a good call, uh, Bill. Yeah. In here, in here, in safety, advanced safety settings, downward positioning section, you're free to choose whether to enable it. Um, this is just some additional information. And here. mine was clicked on there. Oh, that's right. the landing protection switch. Uh, that's the landing protection. Yeah. 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 I didn't use that. And, and what and what does landing protection do again exactly, Marcus? So so what it does is instead of instead of the drone uh, pausing as it comes down, yeah, yeah, it, it will it will just come straight down. So if you're in a boat or whatever, yeah, yeah that's it. why is that important? Yeah. That's yeah. if you're on a boat Good or if you're, if you're hand catching, maybe if you're guys those guys that are brave enough to do that. It's if you're on Captain Ray's fishing boat at the South Florida drone meetup, that could come in real handy. Yep, yep. And Lauren brings up a good point too. Don't forget the fly app update for those using the RCN one. That's a good point. Thank you, Lauren. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and that did. Uh, I went ahead and updated it on my iPhone. I presume if you're on Android, you just simply go to G DJI's website so you can sideload it. Now the other update was new D log M and HLG color modes for telephoto cameras. Here, um, you know, th that's for those who choose to. To choose to go ahead and be able to do this in post. I mean, that's your, um, that does sound like a great feature. I mean, that's something that. And Bill, this is what I saw about earlier. I don't think this is available in the regular Mavic 3. In the regular, the yeah, Pro. you're probably right. Yeah, so yeah Mavic, it, 3 Pro, it, Mavic 3 Pro, Mavic 3 Pro, Cine. It says it says Mavic 3. Oh, Cine. Yeah. Okay. I'm Cine. Sorry. Yeah. 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 It's right. It's right here. Yeah. So, yeah. So hey, that's. Bill, I just want to make sure that you know that's way above my pay grade. Yeah, it is for me too. Okay. And then new intelligent features added to mid-range camera. 
the mid-range camera in the Mavic 3 Pro, Mavic 3 Pro Cine support, night scene video, master lens, one-click short film, and spherical panorama. Capture only, no synthesis, meaning they don't put it together for you. The updated Mavic 3 Pro compared to the Air 3 has added spherical panoramic shooting for telephoto purposes. However, it does not automatically combine them. Users need to use computer software for the synthesis. Uh, common uh, panorama synthesis software, it, it tells you right here, Photoshop and PT GUI. So, okay. No, that, that, that's for the 3X Tele, right? Right. That right. is just for the spherical, though, Ron. Yeah. That he's that's for the spherical. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, so what are your guys' thoughts after, after taking it out today? You know, as far as, do you think, okay, do you think part of it's gimmicky and part of it is actually useful or what What are your thoughts? Oh, I, I think it's, uh, give, listen, I guess the best way to put it is when I got the Air 3, I was going, wow, what? more does this guy bring to the table than the air three well dji just showed us right they added right. these features and particularly you know i don't know for a for somebody like me that i'm just a hobbyist really is it that big of a deal uh not so much but if, you, if you're a pro and you're trying to get cinematic shots for whether it's a, a video production or real estate or whatever it is Boy, I can see. The other thing we didn't talk about, Bill, is the framing assist that it has on there. And I messed around with that a little bit where it shadows the uh, the sides of your 16 by 9 uh, frame uh, so that if you're, if you're shooting in a certain aspect ratio, you can see what that looks like. Uh, so anyway, that that's another yeah, well, one. Let, let me help Marcus on that thing. Basically, Bill, it's just like the not the nine by sixteen mode on the on the Air Three or whatever. It just okay. has it just has about a dozen of them instead of that 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 one that the Air Three has. And why that's important is you can still see the the whole screen when you. It's like a what we ma they mask it. Yeah. So so it's also it. important to say that you what the video output is still going to be the whole screen. Uh, yeah. it, 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 not unlike the Air 3 where all you see is yeah. that vertical video you're yeah. still going to see the whole screen but it assists you in framing and I think that's another probably pro feature that yeah I mean what what and, it, and, and, and if you wonder why well what, what why the heck would I want that what you can do is you if you could pick a format like whatever one by one in there you can go into your editor like Final Cut Pro and you could pick one oh. by one in there and it'll just automatically, you know, do it for you, and you'll have your subject centered because you knew what it was going to look like. You you got a preview of what it's what it's going to look like when you're flying the drone. Exactly right. Yeah, that's perfect, Ron. That's a perfect description. And thank you guys for for your insight into this because you know I'm 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 jealous. That's for sure because yeah, yeah you know, I, no, I don't I don't think it's a gimmick that that the, that you know the AR return to home. I mean. My drone both times just took a took a beeline straight line to me, so it was no thing. But if you were ever in a situation where the drone had to choose a non straight line back to you, it sure of a heck would you know make me feel a lot better to know what route I was choosing ahead of time. Yeah, and I, of course I did that on purpose, Ron, and it was it was yeah. really cool to yeah. see that it it drew that line and you knew exactly where it was going to go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, you know, well, it says in the description, Bill, it's peace of mind. Knowing yeah, exactly what the return route is going to be. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, th there, there's no article on this, but there is a picture of the Pocket 3, okay? And it's our good friend Igor, Igor, um, posted that. And I want to go ahead and put that. See, I got Bill saying it now, too. <laughs> maybe, maybe, it's, maybe, it's, maybe it's Igor in the picture there. We Bill's going to show. Yeah. yeah. Uh, All right. And here, here it is. Let's try to see. I'm going to blow it up here a little bit. Okay. Um, wow. I mean, we have been talking about this ad nauseum for the past several weeks. And hey, where's where Scott to do at tonight? And then He's been talking about it for every year. Boom. It, it's, it's here. And, you know, um, what do you, I mean, from what I'm looking at, the screen does look a little bit bigger on it. It does. Actually, head, you know dude. what it looks like you know what it looks like guys what, what's that knockoff company they they made like a pocket camera this summer where you could detach the head from it and and 
magnetically stick in the wall or something like that. This as screens have sort of looks like what 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 that knockoff one looked like. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably you're probably I right. I forget the name of it. If I said the name, you know, when I say knockoff, they made the stuff for, but but it looks like that knockoff. But uh, I guess we all wanted a bigger screen, so a bigger screen is a nice upgrade because you know it's people with older eyes here. You know, we don't like the teeny weeny uh, screens, and if you ha- and you know, well, there I don't think that's got a touch screen. On it, I mean, nobody could ever touch that tiny screen or whatever and, and get any uh, good out of it. But um, yeah. I mean, it looks a little bit bigger, Bill. I, I hope it's not too big because I don't want a pocket that's not that doesn't fit in the pocket anymore. Yeah. Well, before we talk about the main topic of the night, Mini Three Pro is on sale. Okay. Oh, and surprise! Yeah, it, yeah, this was this was this was not a surprise. I, I was actually kind of waiting for this, and and it, and it, and it jumped out there um, over three hundred dollars. Um, $313 off mini three pro, the RC controller fly more kit plus would set you back $1,158 right now. You can get it for $845. Okay. Um, no, you think that, this, is a good, this is a good time to buy a mini three pro right now. It is a good time to buy a mini three pro. Um, well, if, if not if you don't want to get caught in the upgrade game, huh? Well, yeah. If you don't want to get caught in the upgrade game, yeah, I would say this would this would be a, a good time for you. However, you know, if you want to kick back, wait and see, uh, I would go ahead and do that. Um, and you may not be waiting too long, Bill. Yes, we may not be waiting too long because um, we're gonna we're gonna jump right into this here because I think this is just it kind of lends itself uh, to this right here. Now the first thing um, that I that I want to share, and we hadn't seen a whole lot from our friend for Ocetalev till today, and he points out, oh, there's a date here, September fifteenth. <laughs> I'm like, wow. He put he put the question mark like maybe is it, does he know something or is that a guess? And then look look who who answers under here. Our good friend Igor. Okay, <laughs> except it's in Corellan, on, I don't understand. Yeah, I, and I don't know what he. I don't know. He, he, he typed something in Russian here because that looks like uh, their their alphabet. Um, so I have no idea what what he was saying here. No, is your Russian a little a little rusty? It's a little on the ru- translate post. Okay, soon. Okay, it's, it, uh, Google translated it to soon. So. So, yeah. Bill, I, I better dust the credit card off pretty soon. You better dust that credit card off because it's, it, you know, I didn't expect, I, I expected it in October. I didn't expect it this month, but this is what the, what we're finding out, okay? And what we're also finding out here too, all right, um, let's see, get the article up here. And how about this? You know we're close. When we not only get the, a, a clear picture of the drone, we get the box and we get the side of the box and the specs. Remember, even right before the Air 3 came out, they wouldn't show us that side of the box with the specs. We didn't get, yeah. And we, we're, we're getting we're getting that, that side with the specs right here. You can see it right here. And I'm going to try to bring this up here. Um, and what's nice is <laughs> it's, it's printed also in looking at 4K 100, uh hdr 48 megapixel photo um and we build we believe that 100 megabytes is up for i mean 100 you know frames per second is up from 60 uh on, on maxed out on the uh either mini 3 pro at 4k yeah and it says transmission video fhd 20 kilometers and bill um, that's maxed out on the mini 3 pro it was 12 so that's okay. eight kilometers more and bill that may do be due to the ocusync 4 yeah, because uh, you know that's one of the things it doesn't say on here the Ocu- o- o- OcuSync four, but I, I would almost hazard a guess that would be a logical choice for this drone that it would have OcuSync four on it to have that increased kind of distance. That's yeah. the only way that's going to happen. Well, I bet you soda pop, you're right, or you know, yeah, all oh, I, I, yeah, I don't, I can say I don't count that. With your choice. <laughs> okay, um, intelligent flight features, focus track, waypoint flight, hyperlapse. 4K, 100 frames per second, HDR video, 48 megapixel photo, true vertical shooting, 34-minute flight time, 
on 20 kilometer FHD video transmission. I mean, yeah, this, you know, wow. I mean, we're, we're getting, you know, well, what's let's, kind let's, of, let's, break, let's break it down here before we get too overhyped here. A yeah. lot of this stuff is similar. I mean, we get the bump up in frames per second. We get possibly OcuSync for, we get waypoints and we get omnidirectional optical voids. So they're really doing you know, four things that we know we're kind of getting from here, right, Bill? And I'm right. going to say that frame rate bump is, that's very incremental or whatever. That's no big deal. But yeah, that's, yeah, that's always not a, apply that's... the Air 3, know how how good um, O4 is. And if you're a Waypoint fan, I mean, some people don't care about Waypoints. Uh, some do or whatever. I'm a lukewarm Waypoint person. But, um, yeah, I mean, th there's some good things here. Uh, but it's, um, you know, um, it, it, a lot of it bills going to come down to the pricing. How much are we going to have to pay extra to get O4 and, and, and 360 obstacle avoidance or on the threshold obstacle avoidance? Yeah, I was, I've been, I've been thinking about that as well too. You know, right now, currently, you know, we just saw the price for the mini three pro for the fly more kit, uh, $1,150. Okay. So my guess it's going to be in that kind of a price range. It'll probably be about $1,200 or so. Is just Do you think we'll see a small price bump, like a 10% price bump or something? Yes, because, you know, while there are improvements, and I had a lot of comments because I posted this out on my community tab out on, out on YouTube, and a lot of people are saying, you know, what I've been getting from the comments are, is that these are incremental improvements, not, you know, quantum leap improvements. Go ahead, Marcus. Well, here's what we're missing as uh, citizens of the United States. So while these may seem incremental to us, if you are in the UK, if you are in Canada where you can use a, a sub-250 drone, you want the same or as close as you can get to the same kind of professional level features that you get on a bigger drone you want it in that mini size so that you can get right below that level of all of those drone laws that keep you from flying places that that uh, that you want to fly so that's a great yeah. point marcus yeah well you know. it may seem incremental to us to those other markets it's a big deal right it, it is a very big deal and you know the only thing with those other markets they won't be able to use that longer flight time battery because that's going to kick that over 249 that's, grams. That's very true. Now, yeah, now so. guys, do you, do you think that this, uh, I mean, we're just, we're just conjecture here because it's not the box saying this. Do you think we'll see a stacked sensor on this drone? Like we, we got in the uh, air three line of drones. Well, in other words, will we get stacked? Yeah. Yes. I agree a hundred percent. Okay. Yeah. Well, that that I mean, some people may call that incremental, but I I would say that's a pretty a big deal if they stacked it. Well, let me throw this at you guys then. So now we got I don't know about you guys, but I was totally surprised by the this Mavic Three update today. Do you think any of those features will find themselves on this drone? And 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 the ones that I'm thinking of, or are like the augmented reality stuff on Return to Home, etc. It's it's possible. Excellent point, Marcus. I was going to say probably that augmented reality, you're gonna, probably going to find that on this drone here, okay? Because it, it's not, that augmented reality can really, in essence, be put on pretty much any kind of DJI drone, okay? Right. It's not, it's independent of the camera system, whether or not it has OcuSync 4 or 3, it doesn't matter, okay? So yeah, that is a, that is a great point. And I think that's a feature that we'll see on this that they haven't, that, that they haven't mentioned already. And the Mini 3 Pro, as it sits, does not have that optimized return to home feature that we have on the Air 3 and on the Mavic 3. Could they put that on there as well? Well, Marcus, do you think that omnidirectional optical voids would allow them to do that? Uh, that's exact. That's exactly where I was going with that, Rod. Great point, guys. That's a great point. You know, this, and, and, and to me, and, and I'm going to say this for those that are talking in incremental, okay, this omnidirectional obstacle avoidance is huge. Because you you have this, think about it. It's in a sub 250 gram drone, all right? And, and, and it's full on obstacle avoidance, okay? You know, when the Mini first came out, we were like, oh, it doesn't have it. No big deal. We're okay. You know, but then, you know, as, as, we, as we start getting more and more, 
we get the mini three pro we're like okay you know yeah i can you know it's, it's something i kind of got a need now you know and now having om omnidirectional okay that's gonna give probably i think that i think that's a game changer i think that makes a big difference for a lot of people just think we well, also have a lot of people in the community though they're dead set against optical avoidance that don't want it at all so um that would, wouldn't mean anything to those folks right turn right. it off then yeah but but yeah. uh but i was just thinking how far we've come with oa particularly on sub 250 drones you remember the big sl uh splash that the xeno mini pro made because it was going to have obstacle avoidance of course it didn't really work on that drone <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but 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 dji when dji came to the table with it with the uh with the mini 3 pro it, it well, is is, it is well. will this be the first mini drone with omnidirectional obstacle avoidance yes okay i mean e even ones that don't work i mean even no none of the hubs have even had omnidirectional huh? yeah no and and of course ron you you had the nano plus and it, it, you know it, it it worked on the nano just like it does on the on the light well, it's, it not, it's not work. omnidirectional of course it is it's, not omnidirectional and, and and it's not the fact that it doesn't work it actually is too aggressive or whatever like it it it, it beeps like we well, had mean, a lot of like a time bomb when you take off near anything yeah you had a lot of falsing as well yeah yeah exactly it, 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 yeah I'm, I'm saying it works too good at tongue in the cheek. It's too aggressive or too over, over avoiding. It right. avoids things that aren't there. there you now, it, there says, you go. it says here that there's going to be four different versions of this. The DJI Mini 4 Pro with the RCN2. Yes. The DJI Mini 4 Pro with the RC2. Yes. The DJI Mini 4, 4 Pro Fly More Combo with the RC2. And the DJI Mini 4 Fly More Combo plus with the rc2 now do you think so, this will be the same controllers we saw with the air 3 bill i think so i think okay. you're going to get the exact same controllers yeah I don't so think in other words we can say the same thing we say every time we can just wait about six months and buy this drone drone only and pair it with our controller we got with the air 3 that's an excellent point ron that is an excellent point you know and then when you go out flying you don't have to take you take two drones one controller yeah yeah, it'll be ready. It'll be ready to go. Well, yeah. you know what I'm, you know what I'm kind of waiting for, is when they update the um, DJI RC Pro to to OcuSync Four. Now, will they um, ever do that, or just come out with a DJI RC? I Pro don't. I don't know. Too. I don't know. If they come out with a new one, I'll probably scream because I just I just paid mine off. So. <laughs> oh boy, it is a cool controller. I mean, this is the this thing. You know, if you haven't used it in a while, just like today, I hadn't used it in a while. And man, it, it just, it's so impressive. Yeah. Hey, I, you, Marcus, I totally agree with you. But today when I was flying it, I, I flew it down to the pier. And when I got the pier, I lost the bar. Now, believe me, I still have full control of the drone. The, the FPV feet still look great. But I lost the bar on the signal strength. When I fly the, Air, the new Air 3 down that location, I don't lose any bars. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that's one thing. So I I flew the Air Three this weekend and had got a got a new video coming out on it. And what I did on purpose, and and what first I didn't do it on purpose. I kind of did it on accident. You know how? Well, for me with the Mini Three Pro, I had to be I have to be facing the direction that drone's flying. Okay, or if I get to twelve hundred to fifteen hundred feet away, I'm going to start getting that air message pop up. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. about yeah. signal strength. Yeah. Right. Well, I kind of did this. And then I realized it was an accident, but I kind of ended up staying that way. My back was faced towards, you know, for a minute to where the drone was flying because I flew it overhead. All right. And lo and behold, I let go for a few minutes and there was nothing. I had I had no problems Ooh. with that whatsoever. The other thing, and this is the first time it's really worked for me very well. We have a very small private airstrip, probably. I'm gonna say less than five less than five miles away, okay? So it doesn't fall under the purvy of of a real airport because it's a private strip. They don't have there's a control no, tower or anything. There's no yeah. control tower there. Um, you know, it's I think it's even a grass strip, okay? So it's not even really an official runway. Well, what was real neat was okay, I had my aircraft warning pop up, all right, and it came up before I even heard it, all right. And what was really cool about it was by the time I heard it, 
it was so far away. Okay, uh, you know, it wasn't it wasn't even a threat. And then when I was coming back to land, another aircraft had taken off. It was in the vicinity. I could hear it, and then I, I ended up seeing it. And again, same thing. It wasn't going to be a threat to where I was. But I thought it was real cool because this is the first time it's. I thought it's consistently worked for me popping up when I had the air yeah, three out. No, no, you're totally totally right, right, Bill. The ASB or whatever it's called, it, it, it's, it, it, it works it, much it, better on this drone that I've seen in any other drone for the first time ever. I saw it work on a helicopter. Really? Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's, it it yeah, works that's better than I've, I've ever seen it work before. So, so it's ADSB is what we're talking about. And, right. uh, and, and it, uh, to your point, uh, it worked, I, it was much more sensitive on the air two S and, and then when I switched to the Mavic three, in fact, I did a video about it. Uh, it, Mavic 3 wasn't nearly as sensitive, and I still see that today. The the Air 3 seems to be more sensitive still than the Mavic 3 with uh, with ADSB. Well, you know, speaking of speaking of, of, of those updates for the Mavic 3, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. I think we're probably we may see one or two of those from the Mavic 3 pop onto the Air 3, okay, especially the and AR. That the, the augmented reality and the and the uh, augmented reality, the shadow of your drone when landing. I mean, that should be on all drones. I mean, that's I a cool feature. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And I think, in like like we talked about previously, I think it'll be on the Mini Four Pro. Okay. And one of the other things that I wanted to talk about the Mini Four Pro before, you know, uh, you know, b- before I forget, was uh, you know not only an, uh, a release date but availability. And availability lately, and I'm gonna say I'm gonna say pretty much this year, okay. There's we, we have not run into any issues with that, okay. As far as ordering the drone, getting it in a day or two, and well, the Air Three, oh my gosh, it was like lightning getting here. You know, I, I got mine from Adorama. It was like boom, boom. It was like one day shipping, and it was here. It was crazy. Uh, and I know, I know, Marcus. I know you were the same. Um, you know. And, and that's fantastic. Two days, yeah. 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 I mean, it was crazy. I ordered it Wednesday. It was here Friday. I mean, it was just absolutely crazy. And I think we'll see the same thing here, too, with the, with the Mini 4. Hey, Bill, we got to come in in the chat from uh, Kenny. Place it here. Uh, you know, why is it good to let you know about an aircraft that's not a threat? Well, it may not be a th- – here. here's – I just like the overall situational awareness. And that's just me. I, I think you're making a fair point. Kenny, I, I get what you're saying, but for me, I like the situational awareness of it and the fact that it does kind of make you hyper aware for where manned aircraft could be at. And, uh, you know, so so you do just get that blip where he's a ways out. But what if he did turn toward you? You know, you'd already be aware of him and and know that it was coming. Yeah, just and let me up. address uh, uh, that's Ken Hoffbauer, the great Ken Hoffbauer there. Yeah. Ken, my, my uh, what's, what's his comment? Um what was it? Okay, let you know about aircraft is not a threat. Well, that Mark's case and Bill's case was the case of my helicopter. The BJ was a threat. It was it was low and it was it came right over at one point. So it, it it was definitely a threat and it let me know about it. So uh, also uh, 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 Captain Joe is asking about uh, two F-16s that he saw today. Two things to remember with ADSB. If the aircraft is not in controlled airspace, they're not required to be squawking. Right, they're not right. required to have ADSB on. Number two, military aircraft use ADSB at their discretion. So he, you know, just because they just didn't have it on, right? Yeah, yeah. So you know, that's why you know it's it's a good. I think it, I think it it helps make you situationally aware. But as a good part one hundred seven pilot, you know, one of the things I do before I even start recording. Okay, I'm looking, you know, I'm cranking my neck around. I'm looking up in the sky. You know, more often than not, I got blue skies around here, and it's real easy for me to determine if there's another plane up there. And one of the things I'm also, I got to say this, I'm blessed with good hearing, and I I, I listen. I, 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 you know, I, you know, as much as my, my mother drilled into me, you know, it's better to use those two things attached on the side of your head than what's in, uh, what's in front called your mouth, okay? You learn a lot more that way, um, and and that's what I did. I just I'll stop and I'll listen before I even even 
power up the cameras or do anything. I'm, I'm looking around. I'm being situationally aware. I'm knowing where things are. And, and, it, and it makes a big difference. You know, this ADSB, it helps us, okay? It's an aid for us, but it, you should never substitute it for your own eyesight, okay? In your and own your ears. Your ears and yeah. your eyes, okay? Yeah. You know, they're, they're, they're going to be your best sensors with this, all right? And, you know, you get that warning, you know, you know, don't panic is, is one thing, you know, number one. And, and number two, you know, if you're not sure, just stop. Just, just take your hands off the controller, stop, and see where you're at and assess the situation. Don't panic, okay? You know, our good friend Rick Smith, he unfortunately panicked and he went the wrong way and he lost his drone because of that. All right. You know, so it's just kind of a, kind of a, you know, a, a lesson for all of us here, especially with this ADSB, you know, it's a, it's a great reminder for us, but it's not a substitute. Okay. You know, and I know Marcus and Ron echo this as well. You know, use your eyes, use your ears, be aware, you know, have that, have that sixth sense about you. No one, no one things are, are, are right. Okay. And know where you're flying because, you know, I know that there's that field, you know, it's a private strip a couple of miles away. Okay. I know that. So, you know, it helps make me aware of knowing what's around and being situationally aware. That's so look at Henry Mills's comment, the most recent comment. He says he uh, flies agriculture areas a lot and the ADSB is very helpful with the crop dusters who fly particularly low. That's a great point. That's a great point, Henry. Thank you. Um, yeah, and, and here's another thing. It's difficult to fly because all the low-flying planes and helicopters. Yeah, that's right. a that's another good point, too. Right. Because over in St. Augustine, they probably have a lot of tours. And I know over at St. Pete and St. Pete Beach here where we live, okay, there's a lot of tourist helicopters that are going up and down the beach, okay, and for sightseeing. And you got to be real careful. You know, it's like, you know, when Ron and I went to the beach when when, when we flew together, uh, back in 2019. Okay. You know, there was, I mean, it was later in the afternoon. It was almost evening and there wasn't, you know, th they're not going to be making those kind of flights at that time of day. So, yeah. you know, we, we, we were good with something like that, but you, like Bill, you said, my beach, I don't get tourist helicopters, but I got a lot of coast guard helicopters. Uh, yeah, we got, and, well, and yeah, we got a lot of coast guard. because they're looking for things in the ocean at times. Well, you know, where I, where one of my employers was when I first moved down here, um, there's a Coast Guard station right there, and it was like buzzing all the time. I mean, it was right out over the bay. And I mean, you know, yeah, you know, th those are kind of areas you don't even think about it. You know, you you, you need to be very aware of where you're at and, and what you're doing here. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, so, so this... um, if 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 the Mini Three, if the Mini Four Pro has the a a ADSB, it'll be the first Mini drone with that, Marcus. Yeah, they don't they don't put it on the mini drones. So that's God, that's a great point, Ron. I wonder if we would see that on the uh, on the Mini Four Pro. I uh, now if if you're talking like their rules in Canada, Canada doesn't see a sub two fifty drone as a threat to to manned aircraft. Uh, so I don't know. That's a good question. You know, I'm thinking, and I'm going to say this, and that's a great point, Ron. I don't know if it, well. I'm thinking for ADSB, it's not just software, it's hardware. I, I think there it has to be a, an additional piece of hardware. Probably. So I think that would probably something would have to give in order for them to be able to put something like that on a mini drone. So that's a good point. Maybe they can figure it out. Okay. Yeah, these engineers get paid buku bucks for stuff like that. That's all I can say. Hey, hey Bill, before we start wrapping up, um, you know. Um, of course, next week is Apple Week, the new iPhone. Oh, yeah. I think the watches will be out on Tuesday. Do you think DJI will release a product during Apple Week? Because sometimes Apple kind of sucks all the oxygen out of the air in those weeks, and they won't get much press. When you... is the 15th? I'm trying to look. Today's That's a thing. Friday, which we That's don't usually get a, a DJI release on a Friday. Yeah, that, that would be odd for a Friday. I would say never probably... know, when people like to see Lev gives these dates. We never know if that's a date that the drone's actually on sale or that's the day that the email comes out letting us know about the drone. You know, you're the, right. They, that's they, good... they confused a lot. The actual the actual date the drone comes out and the day it's announced are two different things normally. 
Well, remember, this is the first time he has put something out in quite some time, okay? We haven't seen a lot from him, okay? Igor, Igor has been posting a lot, and, you know, Jasper Allens had posted a lot. Um, um, but, you know, this is the first that we've actually seen something from him for quite some time. Um, and that's a good point. And, you know, and also, too, you know, does he mean that, you know, it might come out the day before, like on the 14th? And his because of his time, it's already the fifteenth kind of a thing. Who knows? Okay, yeah, who, yeah, knows? who knows? But yeah. I, I'm just thinking that we may not see it next week because of the Apple event sucking the kind of oxygen out of the room. With you, you might be right. I mean, you know. Well, I gotta say this on on a side note that that all I think it's called is it the Ultra Watch? Okay. Yeah, the Ultra is supposed to get an update this year. Yeah. Yeah. I, I looked at, I, I tell you what, that's a watch I would get in a nuclear second. Okay. Uh-huh. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. I was reading about that and I'm like, wow. Hey, Bill, just- so what more does it do for you that the regular Apple Watch doesn't? I'm curious. Well, it, it has altitude barometer on it. Um, that, you yeah. know, those are a couple things that. Well, well, I have battery I, life is a big deal, right? It lasts. Yeah, the battery life is tremendous right. on that. And, and a barometer, Marcus, like our original uh, Hubs and uh, Zenos, the barometer. Yeah. Well, really, all your drones have a barometer. Yeah, I just can't remember yeah. when yeah. you talk yeah. about the barometer. Yeah. Bill, when I took a look at the first last year's original Ultra, I just looked at it sort of. Well, this is a this is a watch for runners and bicyclists, and I don't do all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, that is that's a. But you know, for you know, and it's also I think geared toward diving, like a scuba diving. Another thing um, I don't do. <laughs> yeah, and I I don't do scuba diving. I don't climb, but I'm always interested in altitude and yeah, and, that's and, just and that the altitude stuff. alone would be cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah I mean, having, the look the watch. I mean, it's a little bit thicker and like you said, better battery life. And I think it has more ways to communicate. Like uh, it, it's an amazing tech product. But I mean, I don't know. I, but it's double the price of the regular watch. No, no Ron, you're you're out there flying your drone, right? You you got your controller in your hand. You're flying. Somebody sees that big hunk of that watch on your arm, they're gonna go, "That guy's a pro." Or the same, people, <laughs> or the same people that are gonna hunt me down, remote ID, will say, "We'll get this guy's drone and his watch." <laughs> yeah, baby. Absolutely, absolutely, guys. Hey, any you know, I know you're, you're trying to wrap up, but what did you think about that that story about some of the modules don't have very, very strong transmission signal, and some some of these modules may not even go like a hundred yards or whatever. So, like the thieves would have to be like kind of in your neighborhood to actually see you flying a drone. With, with yeah, with that. that I was I saw that, and that just you know, well, are, are you know my, my question is you know. Are are these approved by the FAA? That's that, that's a that's a big question. You know, are ooh, these modules ooh. approved by the FAA? Well, I guess maybe that's part of the slowdown is they need some kind of approval. But you know, I don't know that, Bill. I, I, well, I never well, asked that. Would they have to be a, uh, approved by the uh, the FCC as well? Yeah, I think yeah, so because yeah. it's going to have it's going to have communication protocols in there, and it has to be approved by the FCC. So. Yeah, so there you but go. What do you think well, of all these rumors that the remote IZ is going to be delayed because they can't get these modules sorted out? I I believe it's true, and I heard it week several weeks ago. Okay, even before Ken Heron talked about it, I, I heard it and verified it through several different sources. That yeah, it's going to be delayed. I mean, it's it's it's, it's like it's on us right now. I mean, it's 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 September September fifth. When, when when was we, the we got eleven day, we got eleven days, Bill. Eleven days. Yeah, it's Where, not. Where's it's your not. where's your modules, Bill? Yeah, it's going to be delayed. So, so I've got another idea there, though, that, that, that they could do. They could do kind of a, a soft rollout. They could say, listen, yeah, September 16th is still the day. And if you've got a, a drone that has standard remote ID on it, we expect you to use your remote ID. However, if you have a Phantom 4 and you're doing business with you, no, we're not going to enforce that rule until such a time as that the product is available for you to use, right? I mean, that's something that they yeah. could do. I mean, that, that's a great product. idea, Marcus, but that would come to be, will the FAA ever, like, will they ever make that public or will that just be something that's kind of, you well, know, no, they'd uh, have to announce under it. No, the no, table, no. you know what I mean? No, they'd have to announce it wrong. Okay. Yeah, they'd okay. have to announce okay. it, yeah. Yeah, that would have to that would have to have to go out for, for public privy, right. that kind of thing. So um, any closing thoughts here, guys? 
Bill, it's going to be a busy uh, September uh, for these tech products. Bill, you, you did you even mention that that go the GoPro Hero Twelve is coming out yeah. for sure on Wednesday because it's on their website. We don't know. We still don't know the specs or the pricing, but it'll be have a pre order. So uh, as once as uh, Air Photography told me, I think last year when I saw about all this stuff in September, I said it's going to be a busy September, and he told me it's going to be an expensive September. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, wait, it, it, wait, October, October's knocking on the door, okay? Um, that could be you know, pricey, too, if the pocket three shows up. Yeah. Marcus? Yeah, there's, you guys are both absolutely right. There's a lot going on right now. Uh, you know, the, this this deal today was a, was a big surprise, a fun surprise. I got to tell you, it was exciting. Uh, however, uh, a lot, a lot to keep us busy. And, and listen, there is so much uproar over September 16th in remote ID. It's just going to be like uh, the Y2K fiasco. It's going to come and go, and it's not it's not going to change how you're flying uh, your drone at all. Listen, if you have a drone that has standard remote ID, register it as a remote ID drone. Fly it as you're always going to do, and you're, you're not going to have any problems. Right, you're going to take that Mavic, Mavic 3 out on September 16th, and you're not going to do anything different than you are today. You're not going to do anything different. So uh, I, I just think it's a little bit of a, a nothing burger. I, I there are Listen, I'm not saying I don't understand some of the concerns about it because I absolutely do. Uh, I'm just saying don't let it stop you from enjoying your hobby. Yeah, That's here's your concern. You have a $50 toy drone, and you got to buy a $200 module to put on it to fly it. That's a concern. Well, I would, I'm would. i going to say the guys that I feel sorry for the most are the RC plane guys that have been flying their freaking RC planes for 50 years, and now all of a sudden they have stuff that, that, they, that, they, yeah. that they have yeah. to deal with. And uh, the and Ron and I have discussed this before, Bill. The Avada gave me a real appreciation for what the FPV guys do. You're never higher than a tree, <laughs> you know. Why does anybody need to know where you're flying your your FPV drone? I mean, it's kind of like yeah, you know, it's, it's a little bit it's a little bit weird. However, the, the Congress mandated this. This is what a lot of people they they scream at the FAA. In the FAA, the Congress mandate, they told the FAA that they had to come up with a way to track drones. And, and so, like it or not. I remember a year or two, we encouraged everybody to write their congressmen because they're the ones that exactly. are not, not the FAA, write yeah, the Congress right. people. They, they, vill they villainized the FAA. They're, the FAA is just doing what Congress tells them to do. That's all. So, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. you know, and that, that this is such a great point. And you know what? And I'm going to say this. It's not Republican. It's not Democrat. Okay, it's both sides of the aisle. Okay, it doesn't matter what flavor no, no. you are. That's the one the thing Congress. they can agree. Banning drones is the one thing they can. They can a bipartisan yeah. issue. Yeah, yeah they, can they, agree they, on. Can, they can disagree on a whole lot of stuff, uh, but that's one thing they agree on. And you know, and, and, I, and I gotta say this: I would like to walk up to some people. Okay, some of these famous people who who are talking about DJI, and this is this is kind of my clothes here, and, and talk to them and say, for example. Marco Rubio, he's been blasting the crap out of DJI, our senator from Florida, okay? Yep, yep. And I would say, Senator Rubio, can you explain to me, a Part 107 pilot, why you want to ban DJI drones in the state, not only in the state of Florida, but across the country? Why is it a national security threat? Can you tell me that, you know? Or is this so hush-hush, we don't know, we can't find out about it, you know? I I'm just, I'm, I'm at a loss to try to explain it. I get on my soapbox for that for hours. Hey, before we go here, Mark White has a comment there about RC plane guys flying in Afria. That's just not true, Mark. Uh, there are a lot of uh, some of the parks that I fly at, Heroes Park. I see RC plane guys there all the time. That park is not Afria and will never be Afria. So what are we saying? Are we telling those guys that they can't fly their plane now? That's not good. You know, they're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that one of the things I can tell you from having dabbled in, in that hobby, okay, you know, it's just not not these airfields that you fly at, okay? Right. You know, you know, you got to fly in a big open space, but, you know, it's just not there. And, you know, it, it's, it, it, can, it can be anywhere. Um, you know, and I want to say this, um, you know, before, before we end up closing tonight, um, you know, real thankful because a week ago tonight, we were batting down the hatches, getting ready for this big storm and it was a nothing burger 
thankfully. Okay, we're very thankful for that. Um, How I, close I were you, Teddy? Roll damage, Bill. How far? Uh, probably about 150 miles away okay. because it just it kind of it skirted up. It, it it took a loop and it hit a lot right of places in Florida. Hit people I've never heard of before. I guess they it, it hit Cedar yeah. Key. Okay, and that's in what they call the bend up at the top of the state. Yeah, a lot, a lot of us never heard about the bend before. Yeah, and it's not very populated up there, which, you know, I was saying earlier, you know, it's very fortunate because when it came ashore, I saw some video from it hitting Cedar Key. It was pretty, it was pretty rough, okay? Um, and, you know, and that's why I tell, I told people ad nauseum, you know, it's like last year when Ian hit us, okay, at the last possible second, it was headed directly to hit Tampa. We were going to get the brunt of it. We were going to get eight to ten foot storm surges. Okay, the last second it veered and hit Fort Myers, and it and Ron, you know that area down there, it destroyed Fort Myers down there. It literally oh, yeah. destroyed Fort them Myers down there. Beach. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. it would have destroyed. I mean, it would have been. I, I, we would have directly been impacted where where it was coming. It was pretty much full on where we live. Okay, and we're about six seven miles from the from the Gulf, or not from the Gulf, but from the bay here. So yeah, it would it would it would have hit us and impacted us. So yeah, I have a friend that uh, lives in Port Charlotte, and uh, their condo got just—I mean, it was bad. Yeah, lots of damage. So yeah, and I want to thank Ron and Marcus as always. You guys do exceptional work. And and if you haven't, if you didn't catch their show, they had a they had a pre recorded show yesterday. Go get out there and watch it. It was good. I did see that. You guys did a great job on that. So, you know, make sure you guys go out there and watch that. That was a good show. Um, got lots more coming up, guys. There is so much. I want I want to call your attention to this before I sign off. I got a, got my Lycus case for the Air 3. You guys oh. need to watch that video. Now, is that a hard out. case, Bill? Yes. Yeah. You, you yeah. guys got to watch you, that, that video. That's posted already? No. It's coming. Oh, okay. It's going okay. to come, okay. come out tomorrow. Okay. I got a hard case coming too, Bill, but it's that brand that Ron Brown uses. Ah, and we we uh, the, the Marcus finally got hooked up with Johnny and I's little uh, our, our little uh, provider. Awesome. Well, hey everybody, it's a great day to fly. Take care, everybody. <laughs>